G'day and welcome back. Today's video is just a repair of this chassis. This is a Philips RF8. I did one only a few months ago and if you saw that one this was all in pieces. Somebody had pulled it apart trying to repair it. It was a mess. I got it all working. I had two chassis. I fixed both of them. They went out and they worked beautifully. This chassis came up on a Facebook radiogram group and the gentleman asked if somebody could help him because he just bought this radiogram it worked for a few hours and then made a bang. This is the post that was on the Facebook page and Rick said here, I'll just paraphrase it. He said he was playing a record and about five minutes later he heard a loud bang and then the music stopped from the turntable and then he switched it to radio. It only came out through the right speaker and not much out of the left. So he tried it again 10 minutes later and it all worked again. So uh, he said it's not normal. I think in a later post he might have said he tried it a few more times but couldn't get it to work. Uh, he asked for assistance if someone was close. Well, he's not that far away. He's probably 50k away, but I met him just up at the airport there. He was heading off to Tassie for a holiday. So while he goes for holiday, I'm going to fix his stereo for him. I've been looking around. One of the first things that stood out is it's still got the old electrolytic caps in it. But for heaven's sakes, these are what, 65 years old or something. Uh, now, also, there's um, some components have been replaced here. Um, so there's a resistor here, there's another resistor here that's been replaced. Uh, there's one around there, you can just see. Other than that on here, it looks pretty much the same. There's a capacitor there that's been replaced, and another one there. Now what is interesting is these resistors here supply voltage to the uh, triode on the 6GW8 output valve. These always go high, and someone's replaced one. Doesn't look like it's been done recently, and left the original one in there. I'll bet these, well certainly this one will be high. Now have a look at this capacitor here. It looks like it's blown out there. It may be just the way it's been molded, but it certainly looks like it's blown out. So that'll need a bit of investigation. This board here looks untouched. There's one resistor there and one there I can see have been replaced. Apart from that, it looks original. Uh, so that's the top. I'll turn it over, have a look at the bottom. I flipped the chassis. I'll just have a quick look at the bottom of the board here. I can see two resistors have been replaced here. Apart from that, uh, it looks pretty much original. Now that was the amplifier board, this is the RFIF board, and this looks all original, I can't see any anything that's been replaced there. Some uh, resistors have been replaced here, there's another capacitor there, um, that's about it. I'll have a look at the filter capacitors. Here's looking down at the two capacitors, uh, they're both 50 by 50 by I think 400 volts or something. This one, this one and this one are all in circuit, this one's been capped off with a bit of plastic, and some substitutes have been put in. Now, once again, if that's failed, why would you still continue to use that? Well, I know why, because it costs money to get a new one. I'm going to put some power on it. I'm not going to touch anything before I do. Uh, we'll just see what it does. I'm all set up. I've got two speakers at the back here. I've put little indicators on it so you can tell at home that they're moving or not. Uh, I've got it on a dim bulb. Uh, we've got, what, nearly 240 volts. That's about right. I've connected an aerial. So there's no reason this won't work. It should work. I've just put a knob on here. It couldn't turn it on. I think that's radio. Uh, I've got a light on there and a light there. Uh, volume. One of these was this one, I think. There's something. Now, that's pretty good. I've just put it up near ZL there and, and it's, it's right. So. Oh, I was going to say 24 in cans. Which would okay. be robbing you of 10 whole degrees, Cairns. Sorry, 34 degrees in Cairns right now. 31 in Townsville. Rockhampton on 30. Proserpine, 31. 30 degrees in Gladstone. All right, my little indicators aren't working at all there. I'll try something else. I've put a couple of bits of uh, crunched up paper there. All right, can't play that for long. This one seems to be working less than that one. I'll just separate them a little. And I'll try that. Well, they both seem to be working. I'm in the center of the sound stage and it seems to be centered, so that's okay. I've turned the volume down. There is no hum from these. Those capacitors are still working great. I'm still going to change them. I've ordered two new ones. I'm not leaving old ones in there. They can fail at any time. Let's go to full power, see what happens. Now they're talking now, I've just turned it up and there was a flash over here somewhere. I ran this for over an hour with the cameras on it 
and uh, Joe sat here, did some other work, and there was nothing went wrong. So I turned it off. It's been cooled off for a while. I turned it back on then, and it's making this noise. It's stopped now. It's in the left speaker. The volume is down. Something was causing it. I don't know what. So what I think I'll do now is go and have a look at this capacitor. This is the one that's blown out on the side. Uh, change the resistors that need changing. These two here are candidates. I'll bet that one's high. On the last one of these I did, the, the resistors in this area were all out of spec. I think I replaced all of them. And some bugs have been eating this insulation off here. This was leaning up against this transformer. The insulation's still there behind there, but I'll put some uh, heat shrink over there. Um, now, I've been away from this job for about a week. I couldn't get back to it. But in that time, I did keep running it. And while I was working in the other room, this would just keep running. And it never failed at all. So yeah, it does have a couple of problems. That uh, clicking noise that when you turn it on, that's there sometimes. Sometimes it's not. But what I'm going to do is just start checking some components. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is check this capacitor with a little lump on the side there. I'll flip it over and unsolder the capacitor. Okay, I think this is one of them. And I think this is the other one. Uh, there it is, it's uh, 3900 puff and uh, yeah, it's definitely got a hole in it, it's blown out. And up the end here, it's cracking and I think, yeah, look around there, it's starting to go there. So I'll check it with the meter. I'll give it a test, turn that on. I'll put it on 20 nanofarads. So that's 4,000 and something picofarads. It's well within the 10%, so um, yeah, probably still working. But meanwhile, I wanna check some resistors. Now I mentioned these resistors a bit earlier. These are the sockets for the 6GW8 output valves. Uh, these resistors supply the plate voltage for the uh, triode part of the valve. And these notoriously go high. Now someone's changed this one earlier. I'll bet this one's way out. These are red, red and yellow, so that's 22 plus four zeros, which is 22K, 2200K, I should say. And that one's 239, so that's not too bad. Let's have a look at this one. And this, this one's double, so it's 433. Okay, so that's supposed to be 220. So the one they've replaced is hanging in there. Uh, I'll replace both of those. While I'm here, I'll check a couple of other ones randomly. That's yellow, violet, and red, so that's uh, 4.7. And what do we got there? 9, 9K, so it should be 4.7, so that's high. That one's orange, orange, red, so that's 3, 3, and 2. So that's 3.2, 3.4, it's not too bad. Uh, now that one's 4.7, and what have we, that's got 14, so that's double. Yeah, okay. I think the best course of action on these is just replace them all. They're all going to be high um, for 50 cents each. I don't think it's worth mucking around. And these are really easy to change. Just pop them off, put a new one on. So what I'm going to do is replace all these resistors and I'll come back when I've finished. All right, I've completed this board here. I've replaced a number of resistors. There were some, this one here and this one, these are wire wounds. These ones over here are wire wound. They're okay. I've replaced the two resistors here that supply the plate for the triode in these 6GW8s. And some of the resistors were fine and some were double their value. It just was very random. Even pairs of resistors, one was all right and the other was no good. So it was all a bit random. Anyway, they're all fine. I also replaced a couple of capacitors. Um, they had cracks in the end. Uh, one over here actually fell apart and I'll show you over here. This one here, I just pushed a little bit and it broke in half. Uh, the others have just got little cracks in the bottom of them. Yeah, you know, like that. So. I'll get rid of those. I'm going to put some power on, make sure it still works. I'm on dim bulb. I've got about 237 volts there. The bulb's gone dim. This is warmed up and I've got it on full volume and I'm just getting a little bit of volume out of the right hand speaker. And that's exactly what the owner complained about. He said small amount of volume but only from the right. Let's uh, poke around a bit. So the pro... That's a bit louder. So the problem he was complaining about is here now. Something's lost contact underneath. As I replaced all these resistors, I also checked all the uh, solder joints on the bottom there and they all look pretty good. 
So, all right, I'll flip it up and have a look underneath. I've flipped the chassis on its side. Here's the uh, amplifier board that's giving us trouble. And... Um, hmm. As I said, I checked all these solder joins. I can't see... Something's wrong somewhere. Oh, look at that. <laughs> when I touch this pink wire, look down here. It's not even soldered on. I'll solder that back on. I'll see if it fixes the problem. I'll just tack this on. This has got to come off anyway because I'm going to change this capacitor. Oh, I'll put power on again. Yeah, look, looking all right. 26 watts. I'll go to full power. Here's the volume. I'll turn it up again. Ooh, no, it's still got the problem. Huh. There's nothing there. I'll check the valve sockets. I may have found what was wrong with it. The antenna wire had fallen off when I flipped it over. Fantastic. I oh, know, it's brilliant. It's so inspired. The it? days before a post-it note could be sticking out the side. <laughs> and I love yeah, that that's your naughty yeah. behaviour as a teenager. I know. You I know. know. Well, this is, you know, like, is reading um, a book that is too scary or is a book that is a little too racy even um, as bad as watching films that are inappropriate no I don't oh. think so I okay so that's all come back now I, yeah I think the antenna wire had come off when I flipped it over place to experience things secondhand. Yeah. Like I'm pretty confident this is working properly now. The pink wire was not soldered on at all. It was just hooked through the little hole in the uh, capacitor there. And I'd be pretty sure that's what the owner was experiencing. That was losing contact and you lose the radio. I want to change these two capacitors. They're old. They need to go. I have two of these change a capacitors that I ordered and uh, they're 50 plus 50 microfarad inside one container there. 500 volts, so they should be all right. I've bought some brackets to mount them. Uh, if the brackets won't fit in the area I've got, I'll probably just glue them in the hole. I'll start clearing off some of the wire in here. I'll straighten these little tags that are bent there to hold it in the little slot. And I'll have to unsolder these two here. I have my big soldering iron here. I'll melt this solder here and hopefully I can just Pull it down. No, that's not going to work. I've got some solder wick here. I'll see if I can get some of the solder out of there. It's going to take a lot of wick. Okay, uh, another idea is I'll just shear this off, then mud the solder. There it goes. I'll try and do the same with this one. There we go. All right, done. I'll do the same with this one, I'll come back and then we'll try and fit the new ones. I've drilled some holes to mount these brackets, they're pretty big but I think I can get them in there. I was going to glue them but I really can't guarantee the glue is going to hold and if these move they'll short. So I'm going to put the clamps in and that should be alright. Uh, I've put a screw in there and just done it up lightly, it doesn't have to be tight. Beautiful. I'll fit the second capacitor in, I'll turn it over and I can wire it up. I flipped it over, I had to actually open that hole up a little bit, they were much too close to the edges there. So I took it out in the shed and did that. Uh, I've got the grounds there, I put a little tag on the, uh, the chassis and I'll just solder those up. Uh, the old capacitors used to ground through the um, case, but this one doesn't. So I'll just put a little link in there. Now the rest of it, I know the pink one goes here. Uh, there's a yellow one that went over here. That goes there. Uh, there was a resistor here. It's over here still. Uh, what's that? 115K. I've put a new resistor in there. They're all curled around ready to go. I've reused this one. It's perfectly all right. And that goes onto this capacitor here. So um, that is these wires here, I think. Which means this one goes over here. 
and there'll be a resistor there to make a Pi filter. I'll just have a quick look, make sure I'm right. That's pin 3 coming out. There's the 2 going in. Uh, then there's a capacitor, a 150 capacitor, 1 1.5 capacitor, and then 15. So there's pin number 1, 2, number 3. So that's the power coming out. So that'll go through there. Right, so this resistor goes across here. That's 150. Then these wires go on there. Then uh, 1.5. And then 15K. Perfect. All right, I'll wire all that up. All right, I've soldered all those together. I pulled the resistors off the board there. I only had them down there while I soldered them up. I'm absolutely certain that is correct. Um, I'll put some power on, we'll see if it burns, but uh, I'm thinking pretty right. All right, let's give it a go. Dim bulb, of course. Globe's on, gone down. No, no worries, and he's hoping for maybe a less tangled 2022 in the Tasmanian Parliament. I think we hope that of all aspects of our life. Laura Beavis, ABC News reporter in Tasmania. Uh, right. All right, that's going all right. I'm going to turn this over and I'll check the voltages as it goes through the uh, filters. Right, meter's all set up. I've flipped it over. I'll just put some power on it again. Everything looks normal. So I'll put it on full power. Set that at about 240 volts. Now I'm going to check these voltages. I've written the numbers on the chassis here in pencil uh, so I don't have to keep referring to the book. Now this one says 260. And we've got 258, that's good. And this one says 250. 245. And this one should be 210. 212. There should be 190 odd. I think it might have been 180. I can't quite read it. So yeah, it's 184. Perfect. They're fine. I think I'll flip it over again. I'll just run it for a while and make sure everything keeps working. All right, flip that over again. Everything's in the right place. Um, so I'll turn it up. So the balance works all right. Um, what's going on there? I've run out of... <laughs> I've run out of... Ah. Right, well that pointer is supposed to go over here and line up with that line and they've just moved the pointer along to get it to align, look at that. There's ZL, that's 600, the station I'm listening to is 612. So the point is in the right place but it's actually not in the right place on the dial. So someone's just moved the pointer to get it to line up. Three one hectares, the dollar thirty favorite. I think I'm going to change the dial cord, it looks pretty tacky. If I don't want it breaking, uh, then I can adjust this to the correct place. I'll then need to adjust these two guys here to get that RF to align properly with the, uh, the dial. So I'll just leave it running for a while. I'll come back, we'll have a look at the dial. I ran this radio for about six hours last night and there was no problem. So I'm going to replace this dial string now. It does have little problem areas like this here, so better off it gets changed. Now I sketched out the dial string on a bit of paper here. I just realized it's probably in the schematic that I have, but anyway, I've sketched it out so I know how to put it back together. It's in two parts, this one string here and then the other string uh, here. The string layout is in the manual. I didn't even think to look there, but it's slightly different. So I'll stick to what's in here. So the first thing I'll do is just take the old string out. So here's the old string and I've got a new piece here. All I'm going to do is replicate it and make it the same. I will make it slightly shorter because this spring was pretty much collapsed. Uh, so just to give it a bit of stretch, maybe make it about a quarter inch shorter. I'll do that. I'll come back and we'll refit the string. 
I've made up a new string and uh, it's ready to go. A uh, bit of a change of plans. I haven't put a loop on one end of the string here uh, because when I was measuring this one, it broke. So uh, I don't know the length anymore. So I'll put this in and then I'll just tie the end off when I get to it. All right, to get started, I'll go all the way around there. Hook that through there, down there. Get around this one here. Then the spring goes on. Like that, around there. Two turns there. Now, I really should have started from the other direction. But anyway, this will be okay. All right, and then just tie a knot in there. Okay, I've tied a knot in there. I'll we'll see how it goes. All right, we'll give it a try. Yeah, that's good. That's working good. It's not slipping. Uh, the spring has a bit of stretch in it. It's not a whole lot, but I've got to put the dial pointer on yet. So when I do that, that'll stretch a bit further. I think that'll be good. I'll trim all these off and put some uh, nail polish on them so they won't undo. Now to put the pointer on, it just goes under there and over there, and there we go, that's it. I've cleaned the glass, I'll just put it back. Yeah, so we haven't quite lined up there. I've bottomed out the tuner here, and we're not too far away. I should be able to just move that along a bit. Oops. I also repainted the pointer. Uh, now to get that pointer to line up correctly on the stations I need to adjust the oscillator and then trim the antenna. I've set the pointer on ZL which is 600 if you can see it behind there. Uh, I've set this signal generator to 600. Now this is the oscillator so if I adjust this it'll align the pointer with the dial. Now I'm just going to do this by ear, I'm not going to connect a meter to it. So I'll try and adjust, I'll just adjust it by hand for a second to break the seal. And there we go. So I just peaked this for maximum signal and you can tell it gets deeper like that. That's about there. Okay. So the next thing to do is to go up to 1500 kilohertz and adjust this uh, antenna. Just make sure that's peaked. So I'll go 15. Turn this up the dial here. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that 3AK or AK is 1500. So I'll center it here. That's pretty good. So I'll turn it up again. I'll break that seal again. Actually sounds pretty good. All right, that's it. I'll apply a bit of red seal to these to lock them. I'll just very quickly test these IF. Uh, I'm not even going to try and connect into the valve grid. I'll just do it with the antenna, just see how close it is. So I'll make that 455. Turn it up. And I'll just step up one. Alright, it's probably a little bit high, it's probably about 4.56 or 7, uh, but I'm going to leave it. These things just fall apart if you try and adjust them, so it'll be good enough. Alright, let's check a couple of stations at the end of the dial. There's 4BC, might be difficult to get this time of day, but let's try it. Yeah, there it is. So that's perfect. And the other one we can get now is 4KQ up here. That's perfect, so... Now, there's another one down here, and it's 612, so it's just to the right of ZL. Generally, you know, you might find someone who you admire. There's no marking for that one. So that's, that's perfect. Now the dial's perfect. All right. Apart from a bit more cleaning, uh, there's not much I can do here. Uh, there is something else. The owner didn't want me to get bored, so he also bought along this. This is the record player at his Philips RF8 radiogram. He says it's a little inconsistent. 
Oddly enough, he didn't send the um, centre post here, so I've got one here, another one. I've connected it to power. So we'll see what it does. That's off. Alright, so push start. Looks pretty good. Oh, it's on 78. Oh. I'll try that again. It might have been halfway through a cycle or something, so I'll start again. Makes a bit of a clicking noise. Didn't push that on. The... Looks good. Huh. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so it would play. Something's stopping it dropping down there. Alright, well it seems to be working apart from not dropping down. I think he said it sort of went to any record size it liked, but we'll see about that. Uh, in fact, it's not even sitting down here. So I need to have a look in here. I can take these shrouds off to give me a better view. I'll just flip it upside down for a second first. Uh, now the mounting bracket for my jig might be getting in the way here. So I'll try and get it off if I can. I'll turn it back again. I don't think that was in the way. If I put power back on, we'll see what it does this time. No, oh, yeah, maybe it was. Okay. Wow. I'll just stop it. I'll cycle it again. That looks pretty slow. Um, I'm sure it's okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's working every time. Oops. But the speed didn't seem right, it probably is. I've got it on 45 here, I've just got my speed test uh, app going. Now let's start it up and see what we get. Looks pretty good. All right, we'll see what we got. Uh, 44.98, that's pretty close to 45. Uh, the whale's 0.22%. So it's working all right, the whale seems a bit high, but anyway, all right. I spoke to the owner last night. He said the problem is that when the uh, arm gets to the end of record, it doesn't come back all the way and go to the rest. It stops somewhere and just drops on the ground. I originally thought he meant that it wasn't making the record, but I cleared that up with him. I put the signal tracer on so I could hear it. Um, now, me doing it manually may not invoke the same response so it's working all right there i'll do this a number of times see if it ever fails and if it fails i'll show that bit of the recording yeah he kind of made a mess of itself there it went there it didn't quite go all the way back all right Yeah, it's only just doing it. Now it's stopped. I'm not sure what to make of that. It went from here, over here, didn't quite make it, and then came back again, and it should have gone back to 45. All right, I'll do it a few more times. We'll see what happens. Yeah, that, yeah, okay. Okay. So that time you could hear the mechanism trying to move it, and the arm didn't move. So it's either too tight in there or the friction plate that moves this arm is not hasn't got enough friction in it. it. It actually looked like it was trying to move it but it was too tight. So I'll take these shrouds off, we'll have a look inside. This shroud just clips in here with some little plastic clips and because the plastic's so old I'm very careful. So I'll just use a screwdriver to push that down instead of me trying to compress the plastic. 
there it goes. I should be able to just lift that out now. There it goes. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Alright. This one's got a screw in it. I'll just take the screw out. I think it just comes out somehow. I've forgotten how to do it. There it is. Um, I've leveled the deck up and now it's doing it pretty much all the time. This red friction material rotates with the turntable. It's supposed to connect with this little plate here. The plate is connected to the tone arm and the tone arm should follow it around and land on the record. I'll show you what it's actually doing. So I'll push play and I'll turn this and there it goes, lift it up. Now first thing it does is try and make sure the tone arm is at home. Then it will reverse and it starts coming out. Now you can see it's slipping there, it's just stopped. There's nothing stopping the tone arm, it just doesn't want to move. So either the tone arm's got too much friction in it or this material is just slipping. It's just someone's got some oil on there, it shouldn't have anything on there. I think the best thing I can do is pull this arm apart. I've had a look around, I think if I can remove this tone arm and its mechanism, I can get access to everything I need. Looking in here, there's a circlip in there. And I think that's all that holds it all together. I'm going to lose this. No, got it. Anything that's going to stop me is that length of the uh, lead for the stylus or the cartridge. Oh uh, no, and that thing too. Uh, this rod and the two screws are stopping it coming out. That goes down to the mechanism below. Now if I take that out, I'm going to lose all sorts of adjustments. I'm going to undo these two screws. I'll probably get myself into trouble. I've put lots of little marks on this shaft and on the fitting there, so I should be able to put it back where it was. And there are adjustments in the manual. Hasn't quite let go yet, I'm not sure why. There it goes. Yikes! <laughs> Bits everywhere. Oops. Didn't need that bit anyway. Alright, it's only that last little bit. Yay! Alright, now with a bit of luck I should be able to get this out of here, I hope. I can't get it out the bottom. Okay, the tone arm turns on this single ball inside this cup here. Uh, it's a bit dirty in there, I'll clean it up. I would think that wouldn't have any lubrication in it. So I'll clean all that up and dry it out. Here's the little friction pad and it's whatever's on there is smooth. It's like a build up of something. Over here it's, it's coarse, here it's very smooth. So if I try and clean that off, I'm not sure what I can clean it off with. I'll try a bit of alcohol, try and clean it off. Otherwise, I'll have to try and sand it off or something. I don't know. I've got a bit of alcohol here. I'll see if that'll take it off. Oh, yeah. yeah it's taking it off. I'll let that dry out. I'll see if I can just sand the top of it or somehow with a emery board or something I'm not sure I'll see what I can do I've cleaned everything up and it's ready to go back together I'm not going to film it it's the reverse of pulling it apart just much more swearing so leave it with me I'll put it all together and we'll see if it works I've reassembled it all and I'm ready to test it it went together very easily in fact it went together more easily than when I pulled it apart uh, the two little screws that I undid was a bit apprehensive about doing I just put them back in the little marks that they'd made in the shaft. So uh, yeah, it was, it was no trouble at all. This tone arm is so much easier to move. It uh, it was getting stuck before, so I think that was a, a lot of the problem. All right, let's give it a try.
perfect. I'll just try it a few more times and make sure it's going to work. I'm pretty confident that that's going to work properly. So it's even going right back here. Before it was stopping about here and sort of stalling a bit and then eventually moving over. It's doing it smoothly now. So, as I said, I'm pretty confident. The little idler wheel in here must have a flat or something on it because it thumps as it's going around. So you can hear that. I think I'll tackle that job in the morning. I'll put this on repeat and just let it run back and forth for half an hour or so. Just make sure that it doesn't um, fail at any point. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it's fixed. So I'll come back in the morning and tell you how all that went. As I said last night, I'll have a look under the platter and inspect the idler wheel. I removed the circlip. I ran this record player last night for a few hours. Just ran it through cycles. It was fine. It never skipped a beat. There's a circlip retaining this idler wheel. I'll get it off without losing it. Okay. That's the edge of the wheel. Uh, it looks alright. Oh no, there it is there. There's a little dimple. Must have been resting against the spindle at some point. This is a pretty small idler wheel on these and there's the dimple up there. Uh, if I take the too much off you end up not having enough diameter to push against the side of the platter and it might drive properly. I'll try and clean it up a little bit. Um, might have to leave some there I think. But I will mount it on my lathe and just machine the smallest amount off. I put a bolt through it and mounted it in the lathe and tried to machine it. doesn't really work. So I ended up using a file. Uh, I didn't want to try and file a divot any further. And that's it there. So it's still there. It's, it's more of a flat than a divot now. I drenched it in rubber renew to try and swell it out. So it doesn't look too bad. I'm going to try it. Uh, I didn't want to go too far. So I'll refit it and we'll try it out a bit later. I've put the wheel back on and I noticed earlier that the axle that the wheel spins on isn't vertical. It was tilted on an angle like that, not that bad, but that's the way it was. So I have a little tool here that you fit in here and you can bend that to make it vertical and adjust the height. So it should be in the center of the spindle, which it is. So that should be all right. That might reduce the wow a little bit. I think it was 0.22% earlier. So I'll put the platter back on and do a speed test again. I've got the speed test there. I'll start it up. Put some power on. So that immediately is running faster than it was. Okay. I also cleaned and lubed everything while I was in here, I forgot to say. Uh, so the speed's picked up to 45.78, I think it was 44.8 or 9, I can't remember now. And the wow has dropped from 0.22 to 0.14. So some of the better decks will still get uh, 0.10, so you won't be able to hear that. I've put the radio back on the bench and it's set up. I've plugged the record player into it, so it's getting its power and inputting into the radio. So I'll just do a, a very quick run through, make sure it works. It'll probably fail now just to annoy me. Another thing is the diameter of that little idler wheel makes absolutely no difference to the speed. So me taking a bit off the diameter will not affect the speed. Turn over the radio. So 
So I found the fault with the radio and I found the fault with the record player. So I can send this back to the owner. I've done a few other little items to make sure it's reliable and hopefully you'll get many years of trouble-free motoring. I apologise this repair uh, video has gone longer than it should have probably. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can join me for my next radio adventure.